Alright, so today we're going to get to the main part of active server web pages. Basically this thing of using data in a web page. So let's just get an overview of where we've been and where we're going. So we basically introduced this new idea called active server pages and showed you how to use Visual Web Developer, which is the, one of the programs you use to make those kind of pages. Then we started making some basic web pages, except they have controls that are unique to active server pages like a combo box and radio buttons and things like that, which are kind of neat. And those only work properly if you have what are called events and postback, so that as soon as you pick something, it activates uh, the control to work properly. Then we went sort of back to things we did already in Dreamweaver and learned how to do style pages in uh, this new program called Visual Web Developer. We also did master pages, which are like templates. Then we got into data. We did a very quick little lesson to review some material from grade 11 on databases and specifically how to use access and things like that. And now what we're going to do to put it all together in the next three or so lessons, first of which we're going to cover today, is database driven web pages. Okay? And after my lesson, if you don't get it or you want a refresher, in the notes and videos, uh, this video right here, number seven, would be a great one to watch. The next day, the next lesson is going to be video number 10. Okay, just to give you an idea. You can also get to those videos on the internet website too. Okay, so that's where we're going with this. Okay, so we start off with a white screen that's, uh, you know, your typical first page in an ASP.NET uh, web page. And now what we're going to do for the first time is over here on the right hand side, we're going to right click add a new item and this item we've done web forms we've done master pages style sheets this one right here sql server database I haven't done one of those before okay and we're going to rub out this name here and uh, we're going to call it customers okay and then we're going to press add now it's going to say this it's not an error all it says is hey you should be putting this in this folder called app data and just say yeah okay go ahead okay takes a few seconds then over on the right hand side of the screen don't get nervous you haven't lost the stuff you used to have before if you press this button there's your regular screen that you're used to but now there's this new one called the database explorer screen and what we're going to do here is create a database now, previous lessons we learned how to make access databases and they can be used in this program and I'll show you one example in a few minutes. But there's another kind of database used in professional sites called SQL. And uh, it is quite popular because it is very powerful and allows multiple users to access the information all at the same time. And that's what we're going to learn to make right now. So see where it says tables? When I press it, there's really nothing there yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click and we're going to add a new table. All right, now this is going to look familiar. This is how we define uh, a site when we made it in Access before, you know, when you had to make all the fields. So we're looking at basically the same kind of idea. Okay, so for the column name, the first one, we're going to have uh, customer ID. So everybody's going to have like a code number. All right, remember I told you about relational databases? And since they're just pure numbers, I'll call them an integer. And see where it says alone nulls? No, I always want somebody to have a customer ID. Next thing we'll do is we'll have the customer's first name. And there's these new kind of variables, n varchar 50, which means it could be a combination of numbers and letters. I know nobody really has numbers in their name, but this will have up to 50 characters of that form. And if you don't want to put in the person's name, that's fine, as long as I got their customer ID. So that one I'm going to leave like that. Last name. That'll be also an N bar char 50. And the last thing will be a credit limit. This is like for a bank or something. Credit limit, that's money, right? So is there something that would be like money? Yeah, there's actually something called money. And again, you can allow nulls if there's no uh, credit limit. Okay, okay, next we'll save this and we'll call it customer table. This is a table, it's one part of the database. All right, so now we're good. We've got a customer table over here. 
and those are all the fields, but it's empty. So the next stage is now to show table data. So what you do now is make up some data. All right. Now the thing that happens here is you don't type in the customer ID. It's going to be done for you automatically. So what you have to realize is, let's go back here again. We're going to click on this. As I was mentioning, I don't want you guys to type in the customer ID. So what I did is I went back to the definitions as we were creating them and this is going to be our special field and if you remember what we did in access you press this little thing here which is called the key field or the primary key so what we're going to do is press this so it becomes the primary key we're going to do one more thing we're going to go down here for a second and there's this thing when you move down okay called identity specification and we're going to make it so that when you go into that particular record it will automatically give it a, a code number and we're going to do something really simple right now so identity increment will be one identity seed is one which means this person is going to have a code name of one and then the next person is going to have a code name of two and you could make this change it to whatever you want and do all kinds of other things with that okay so we are basically ready now let's resave it and we can go back here if you want all right and we can close this for a second just to show you how we we left off so what you do here is you right click and you show table data all right and again we go back in here and again do not type in the customer and we just make up a few people charlie shirelli credit limit five thousand dollars see the one it went in by itself mary jones Okay, I've added a few other people's names. These were automatically generated. We can do a save again. And now we are basically done with this part. We've made our database and now we're ready to connect it to a real website. So we're going to switch to the Solution Explorer and double click on here. This is our default page. I'll stretch this out a bit. Now there's kind of a, a slower way to do what I'm going to show you and then a faster way. I, I think I'm going to show you both so you understand the basic technique. Basically, when you connect the database to your website, there's got to be like a source. So down here where it says data, there's an SQL source. That's what we're using right now. And there's an access source. So each one will have its use. So basically what you do is you drag this right on the screen and you let go. Now nothing's there yet, so we got to press configure. And then it says, well, what do you want me to connect to? Well, there it is, customer's database. Then you press next. Don't worry about this. Okay, here, if this database had more than one table, you would say, uh, pick this other table. But we've only got customers, so that's it. And I want to grab everything. So I put it on the star, and then I press next again. And you can test the query if there was a query. This was just going to show me everything. So this wasn't anything specific, like only show me the people over a thousand or anything like that. So that's the basic database is going to grab the whole thing, and then I press finish. Okay, so now we've made our connection string, and now it's time to show off what we have in our database. So there's several different looks that you can get when you want to show the database off, okay? Okay, so there's several ways you can now show off this data that's connected. And uh, you see a couple here, details view, grid view, there's another one called list view. Uh, we're going to start off with grid view, which is the most basic, and all you do is you basically drag it on the screen. Okay, now it's not really connected yet, so next what you got to do is see where it says choose data source. There's our source, SQL data source 1, we just made it. Okay, now there's other things you can do. You can enable selection, sorting, paging. If you had like 10,000 of these, that would be a good thing to turn on. I'll show you some other examples later on. But if you enable paging, it has like page one and it shows you like seven things, and then page two, another seven. So you could do it more and more. Uh, other things that you can do, auto format, you want it to look prettier. There's different styles, and you can press apply, and you press OK. All right, so you're basically ready. Let's take a look at what it looks like for real. Okay, there is 
your database with the names in there. And you just squish this in a bit. Okay? And that's what you just did. Now here's the really neat thing about this. Let's say you have some other customers. You can double click over here and show table data. There's your original. Let's add in a new person. Um, Kim Smith and two thousand dollars and then you press save. Okay now that one's done. Now you can go back to your main page. You can show it again and there's Kim Smith added and that's what the real advantage and power is of this new thing called a database. You've got somebody working in one of your businesses and they keep adding stuff to the database every time people look at your screen it changes but you didn't do anything special you created this sort of template and now it gets filled in dynamically and that's the cool thing about databases here's details view. it's just another way to do a database I'm going to drag and drop it there it has the same kind of setup you tell the computer yeah we're going to use that all right and uh, you can do auto format on it if you want to it has a slightly different look to it and when you preview it, it looks like this. All right, so a little bit different. But you know what? How am I going to get to the next thing? So in this one, it actually is important to turn on Enable Paging. Now watch. Okay, so this one, you need to go like that. Okay, now let me show you a really cool, easy way to add stuff uh, that's from a database to a website. This is ridiculously easy. Um, see this database? Just drag it and drop it. Now that just creates the link. Let's go inside of it. See this database? This is an actual table. Drag it and drop it. And in a couple of seconds, you know all that stuff we did? It does it for you in one second. Like that, it's ridiculously easy. Let me run it right now. It's done. There it is, already done and loaded up. Maybe not as nice looking, you don't have the total control over it, but in two seconds you can just drag it there and it's connected and it is working and it's live. Now I, sp I spent a day with you showing you how to use Access, so let me show you how if you have an Access database, you can add it to a website using ASP.NET. So let's say you've already made your Access database and I've got one right here, it's in this folder, okay, it's called Mac tub and there it is right there. All you do is you drag it and you drop it right in that folder where we had the SQL database. And now you've got your access database right there. Then you go through basically the same technique. You connect it. So this one you have to connect the access database. So you drop that in first. You configure it. So you go looking for this new database. Okay. And then basically this one has a, a bunch of things that you could grab. So remember how I showed you the one where they only had one table? This one has a bunch of them. We'll grab the artist table and we'll grab everything right now and maybe we'll fix it up in a second if it looks really bad. And then you press next, finish. All right, that's the first step. And then you decide what you want to do. And we'll just grab uh, grid view is good enough for me. So you drag it, drop it. And again, what's the source? There it is right there, axis. And then when it's preview this I think this is going to be huge so we'll have to fix it up a little bit yeah look how big it is there's all these different uh, fields here this one here in particular is huge so we'll fix that up in a sec now if you've got too many fields or there's a certain number of ones you don't want you can click on this red little arrow there and then pick edit column columns and then you can take off ones that you don't want so if we don't want the bio for now we can delete it picture name we can delete it uh, password deleted and as you're doing that you're making it smaller and smaller so that it looks a bit more reasonable okay and then you get a, a decent looking site so those are the two techniques to connect databases you can create your own right in this program called SQL or you can take one that you made in a program like access and drag it in and then connect it so it's actually pretty cool and it's pretty easy to do